Come on, quick. I thought I'd do a quick video for what is arguably the worst car in the United Kingdom at this moment in time. This badge, obviously you would think it means Rover, but it is in fact the city Rover, as you saw from the outside. Um, my little dog is sniffing gratefully and enjoying herself here. I've picked up this city Rover for £200. It's just out of MOT. It needs... The fuel filler neck sorted out, which I got one of them on eBay for 15 quid. And it got, it needs a wee blown exhaust welded up. This is the poor as hell spec version. Um, doesn't have the air conditioning, despite the fact having the button for aircon. It's not a proper aircon spec car. Cookie, stop standing and everything. Yeah, 200 quid gets you a City Rover with. 51,000 miles on it. It came with a quarter of a tank of petrol, if that is to be believed. Um, overall, the interior is in a really nice condition. It's really surprised me whenever people, you know, slate these wee cars so much. There are a few things that are substandard. Um, for example, the gear stick. This is currently in second gear. That's first gear. Second gear. First gear. Um, I'm sure this can be aided upon uh, and improved greatly, but um, it does, for example, if I'm sitting properly, you know, there's, that's the most travel out of any car I've seen. It would put you in mind of a, of a Rover 25 that the gear linkage has failed, but um, we'll do a wee bit more of a tour. This is car, to the best of my knowledge, is completely factory. Comes with a reasonably sized glove box with... Um, two dog approved parking sets, <laughs> par uh, cup holders. Um, what the hell is this? Oh, it's an extra mat for down there. These wee mats, obviously. They just lie there in place. Um, we'll go into the main excitement. We have a Sony head unit. I'm pretty sure that's from 1986. It's a pretty basic unit, does the job, but doesn't seem to sit quite flush. Uh, I've had it out once or twice. You have the oh so exciting ashtray. Wow. Um, is it removable? Uh, it probably will come out, but I'm more likely to break it. You have a cigarette lighter with no cigarette lighting mechanism. Um, little four-speed fan. Buttons are... If you are used to a modern car... These are very, very like you would find in your, you know, your grandfather's Toyota Camry, you know, or Toyota Corolla from the mid, maybe early 80s. Build quality. You know, people slag the build quality in these. You know, I, I had the pleasure of driving this wee car up and down with the previous owner's lane, um, which was frankly like something from Afghanistan. It was potholes that are, you know, eight inches deep, big big clunking and you know what there wasn't a noise out of it the whole car there wasn't a rattle and um, everything works it seems to work it's got four electric windows all them work and um, it's got all the manual joys of manual windows mechanisms aren't damaged on there even you know i read that this is a common problem the wee rear view mirror breaking and um, switch open the door Interior light works, which is probably more than you can really hope for. Um, it has five full-size seats, although it only has two full-size seat belts and a lap belt. I'm really not sure how they approved that in nineteen in two thousand and four, with all the safety legislation and everything. Um, it's got four speakers. It's got one on the door and one on the dash, which sound like they are quite possibly the worst quality speakers I've ever heard in my life. Um, no armrest, as you can see. It does have this weird plate here, which I'm led to believe controls the... Cookie, get your head out of the way. Where's where the uh, handbrake tensioner is. Um, sticks out quite a bit on the sort of charcoal-covered carpet. Um, you do get this oh-so-groovy carbon fibre style interior trim. Which I am not a fan of at all. Um, I know this is the Mark IIs came with an absolute 
beautiful satin silver interior. Um, and they also have black door cards and trim. You have your height, your visibility adjustment for your your interior lights, um, rear view, rear demister, rear wiper, rear fog light, and height adjustment for headlights. Nice and sort of tray underneath. Um, overall, what do I think of this car? Well, I've purchased this car for one simple reason, one simple reason only, is for parking in Belfast, um, near the student college areas. I can add this onto my classic insurance policy for 30 quid, um, as long as I'm not driving it up and down to work. There's no problems with that, so I can use it for domestic and commuting. Um, the wee car itself, it's got a lot of dents in it, but there's no rust on it. Uh, it's to be honest, it's I've, I've only ever been in one other city rover before, and that was when they had just came out uh, at a car show in the uh, Kings Hall in Belfast. And I just thought they were an okay wee hatchback car. Obviously, you were never getting to drive them at the time, but I, I have to admit, um, you know, for all the slagging they get, they're a damn sight better than most of the cars that I was learning to drive in. They're certainly better than my Citroen AX from a point of view of build and from, you know, that was, all right, fair enough, that's a 20 year old car. And this is, you know, this is 2018 and this car is based on a 1998 car. So I'm comparing it against a 30 year old car there potentially. But, you know, from the point of view of starting, like I hadn't started it since I got the car back, bang, no issues. Um, engine's running real sweet. It's really quiet. It would put a K-series to shame how quiet. It, yes, it's only a wee Peugeot 1.48 valve. Um, I, I've, I've read things about guys dropping uh, the Saxo VTS 1.6 engine in. 130 brake on one of these. I think that would be an interesting wee car. Um, there is a turbo variant of this in India, but I don't think it's the same engine. Overall, I, you know, 200 quid, um, I've got the fuel filler neck for 15 quid, I'm going to tack weld up the uh, exhaust myself, it's a hole about the size of a thumbnail, so I'm not overly worried about that, that can be filled in with, um, uh, what do you call it, with uh, weld, um, you know, it is basic, it is more basic than the likes of your basic, you know, it really does put me in mind of those Mark II Fiestas, from back in the 80s, you know, that kind of, the plastic has that kind of, you know, solid, you can see the plastic deforms a bit under a good bit of weight. The steering wheel is plastic as well. Um, I've been told there is a leather option, uh, same with leather seats, but it wasn't sold in the UK, uh, it wasn't offered from the Indian factory because obviously cows, cows are a sacred animal and the leather comes off it. Um, I've since been told the leather black steering wheel is available as an option. Um, I may track one of them down because you know, you're driving that all day long. Um, and also there's a, a leather black gear knob, which I'm sure I'll maybe track down. But I've been since discovered that the seats that my wee dog seems to be approving of, um, the leather seats that came from the factory, leatherette here, but the ones, the rare ones that did have full leather, were actually pig leather. So that was how they uh, appeased the uh, Indian community um, whenever they were building these cars. Um, what do I think about it overall? I mean, it's not a bad car. It's really not a bad wee car. Um, I'll show you the boot here. One back if I put the keys. Come on, girl. Get out. Seriously, Cookie. It's like, Cookie. Come on, dog. Get this bit to open. There is an internal mechanism, but I'm just using the key for now. I mean, that's a nice size bit. For all the slagging people give these wee cars, that's not a bad bit. Spare wheel inside. Also, this one hasn't been used. It's dusty as hell. Um, that's better than a lot of modern cars. Coming with their filler caps and all, uh, their, their foam caps. Um, there is a wee boot light. I don't know if it works by manual or not. But, I mean, you do see the wee issues. I mean, the things people talk about complain. On a modern car, that seat belt mechanism would be covered up a bit. But, you know what? It's 
going to do me nicely. It's an alright wee car. Uh, for all the slagging everyone gives these cars, you know, at the end of the day, if you were wanting something cheap and cheerful, you couldn't do much better than this. Um, wheel rims. You know, these, this car's 2004. And you see what I'm saying about all the dents. This door's got a few in them as well. The colour really confused me as someone who's colourblind. Apparently the colour is graphite purple. I would have just called it slate grey, but that's me. But yeah, so this is the future project. And by project, I do mean in the loosest possible terms. It'll be getting an MOT, it'll be getting front and rear parking sensors, and it'll be getting a wee um, 20 pound head unit off eBay, just in case someone breaks into it. And uh, that'll be the end of that. But yeah, I just thought I'd show you this one. Um, I'll be returning with more Freelander stuff in the future. Um, but yeah, I know they'll probably get a lot of abuse and a bit of banter out of this car as well. It's nice to have something that you can just park up and not worry about. You know, if I come back and there's another dent in this door, I'm going to be annoyed. I'm not going to be annoyed about it. But if I was taking one of my other, like my big Rover or my Freelander into Belfast, uh, you know, uh, one of those doors is starting to get hard to find for a 75 in the right colour. And the Freelander, I know it's kind of an off-road car. I just don't want it damaged. I just don't want it wrecked. Um, something a bit strange I did notice about this, and I don't know if this is unique to this car. The lights seem to have kind of gone a bit... And I don't know if it's like a, like a film over the top of them has came off. It doesn't seem to be the usual. I think it actually might be... I'm really not sure what that is. I don't think it's the usual delaminations occurred. But you can feel it on the outside. I'm wondering if it's like a layer of moss or something maybe. Yeah, this is the... The beast from the east, quite literally. Um, one of my friends has dubbed it the City Racer. So, I'm very tempted to... You know, have a bit of crack, get some really crappy Japanese arches, lower it, some crappy Japanese alloy wheels and put like a big spoiler on it, you know, straight out of 1995 Fast and Furious, but I'd rather just get it MOT'd and go from there, but small update and a small car, um, you'll maybe see bits and pieces as we go along, but that's it, uh, the, the City Rover or the Shitty Rover or whatever you want to call it, but uh, I definitely think that Rover missed a trick. They should have not priced it when they were pricing it. They had it starting price at six and a half grand. And the, the top spec car, which really consisted of aircon, alloy wheels, and side skirts, at eight thousand pound, eight and a half thousand pound, which at the time in two thousand and four was same as a mid price Volkswagen Polo. They were mad. I always said they should have called it the Rover Five. Has five sized full doors. Has five side full seats. To had it on five years warranty and five years servicing and sold it for you know five thousand pounds as a basic entry model. It would have been great. You know, we live in an age of disposable cars, disposable clothes, disposable everything. So this this could have been the I still think it is quite a a, a modern disposable car, but we'll just see how this one goes. Um and I'll give you so we update I'll give you so we update once at MOTs. And we'll go from there.